Season of Plunder is here in Destiny 2, and with it of course comes Arc 3.0. This is the final rework of the three light subclasses and it has some incredible potential. This ARC 3.0 Hunter build is so unique and so much fun to play. Today I'm going to show you everything you need to master it. If you want to delete bosses and one punch everything in the game, be stylish as hell while you do it and stick around because you're going to like this. But wait, are you guys seriously still manually capturing clips? Okay, Grandma, let's get you to bed. Outplayed does everything for you. Did you ace the round in your Valorant match? Did you clutch the win in Apex Legends? Outplayed automatically connects to your favorite games and captures all your most epic moments without you even having to think. It's amazing and it's super easy to use, and believe me, I wouldn't say that if I didn't use it myself. It shows me every highlight from every game on a clean timeline that I can snap to instantly. Then I can clip those moments and share it anywhere on social media instantly. It's so convenient for sharing those awesome moments with friends, and the best part is it's completely free. Use my link down in the description to download it today. Big thanks to Outplayed for sponsoring my channel. Now let's get back to the content. I've been tinkering with this build for the past week leading up to Season 18, and now that Arc 3.0 is in our hands, we can take it to its final form. There will be a dim loadout link in the description to get you set up with the subclass and mods right away, and if you enjoyed the video, a like and subscription is massively appreciated. Let's get right into the subclass, because there's a lot to understand with this 3.0 rework. Starting off, we of course have the brand new Arc 3.0 Hunter Super, Gathering Storm. You toss your staff into the ground or into a target, dealing huge damage and also dealing big AoE Jolt damage a few moments later. Jolt is one of our Arc 3.0 verbs. It's basically like Volatile from Void 3.0, but for Chain Lightning. For our dodge, we have to take Gambler's Dodge. This is essential to the build to get our melee back. And now Hunters did get Blink back for their movement ability, and you should absolutely use it because Blink. But really feel free to use whatever you're comfortable with. For our melee, we do still have Combination Blow. This melee gives us a stacking buff on melee damage. It's a 60% increase per stack, up to 3 stacks. It also refunds our dodge completely on kill. This is essential to our massive melee damage. I am also currently using Pulse Grenade as it synergizes well with one of our fragments below. For our aspects, first we will take Lethal Current. This makes it so after we dodge, we have increased lunge range on our melee, it jolts the target, which now makes them chain lightning damage to nearby targets, and it causes a damaging aftershock, which does way more damage than I ever expected. It also has the benefit of blinding jolted targets when we melee them. It's a really strong aspect. And next we will take Flow State, where defeating a jolted target will make us amplified. Amplified is an amazing new mechanic where we gain increased movement speed and weapon handling and we gain a further speed boost after sprinting for a short duration. Flow State also grants us increased dodge regeneration, damage resistance while dodging, and increased reload speed while amplified. It's the total package. Now moving on to our fragments, we don't have all of them yet. I assume they might unlock after a community goal or after King's Fall on Friday but there's really only one we would use that we don't have yet. I am taking Spark of Resistance. This grants us plus 10 strength and grants damage resistance while surrounded by enemies, which we will be often since this is a melee build. Next is Spark of Magnitude, which makes our lingering arc grenades last longer. This pairs great with any of these grenades, but I am running Pulse Grenade. Next we have Spark of Shock, which makes our grenades jolt enemies, allowing us to chain lightning damage off of them and granting us the amplified buff on kills thanks to Flow State. And finally, we have Spark of Recharge, which increases Grenade and Melee Regen when we are low on health. I will most likely swap this fragment for Spark of Feedback when it unlocks, as that grants us plus 10 resilience and increases our melee damage further. Now moving on to our loadout, this is where things start to get complicated, but extremely rewarding. Let me explain. We will be using two different shotguns to create a perfect loop with our subclass and exotic armor of choice. We're going to use the Liar's Handshake Exotic Armor, and if you don't have this exotic, you can actually grab it for free in the helm right now as part of Bungie's seasonal bonus package, so definitely pick it up if you don't have it. Liar's Handshake is all about our melee. Whenever we use our melee, or whenever we get hit with an enemy melee, we can follow up with an extremely powerful cross-counter melee attack. This is a 3 times multiplier over our base melee, allowing us to hit for over 100k damage when we have combination blow times 3, going at the same time. It's powerful on its own, but we can loop it into an absolutely insane DPS combo that I am just loving right now. It starts with a one-two punch shotgun. 
I recommend an arc shotgun if possible to synergize with our mods and subclass. But one two punch grants us a three times multiplier on our melee as well after hitting every pellet in our spread. What's very important to understand is that one two punch does not technically fully stack with cross counter. If you try to one-two punch into a cross counter melee from Liar's Handshake, you will get a diminished multiplier from one-two punch that takes it from a 200% increase all the way down to an 80% increase. So ideally, you're going to want to proc one-two punch before your first melee to get the full benefit and then use your cross counter melee so that both melees have a three times multiplier. I know that's a mouthful, but I'll explain it a little bit further. This works out perfectly because of everyone's new favorite exotic shotgun, the Legend of Acrius. This shotgun has been resurrected from D2 Vanilla and is stronger than ever. Not only did pellet shotguns get a 25% damage increase last season, but Bungie also added Trench Barrel to Legend of Acrius with the launch of Season 18, and this makes it incredible. Trench Barrel is almost like an inverse one-two punch. After using our melee, our shotgun will deal 50% increased damage for a short duration or up to three shots. This creates a perfect DPS loop for Liar's Handshake. You can one-two punch into your first combination blow melee, then swap to Acrius, follow up with your cross counter melee, and proc Trench Barrel for Legend of Acrius. You won't always be able to pull off the whole loop, but even using one half of the combo on either side is enough to kill most champions without even stunning them. It's very complicated on paper, but flows really naturally with the way you use this build. Now next, we're gonna move on to our armor mods to really round out the build. The first mod is naturally going to be Melee Wellmaker. This will generate arc elemental wells on our melee kills, so we constantly generate those arc wells. Next, we will take Well of Ions, which is an arc elemental well mod. This increases our melee damage for 10 seconds after picking up an arc well. It is a 30% damage boost, that will stack with everything going on in the build already at any time. It's free damage. Next, we will take Font of Might, which will boost our arc weapon damage when we pick up an arc well. This adds 25% weapon damage to any of our arc weapons, but most importantly, Legend of Acrius. Then we will take Elemental Charge, which makes us charge with light whenever we pick up a well and grants us two stacks whenever it's an arc well. We will pair that with Reactive Pulse, which puts out a burst of arc damage when we take damage and are surrounded by enemies. It also grants us an overshield during finishers, which will come in handy in that harder content. Now moving on to the seasonal artifact, there are a few mods that we can take here to push the build further this season. First off is Focusing Strike, which grants class ability energy on melee attacks. This isn't necessary, but is really useful if you get caught out of your loop. Next, we have Surge Detonators, which grants us Overload Arc Grenades. We can pair this with Unstoppable Shotgun and Anti-Barrier Auto or Scout to cover every champion whenever we need. In the final column, we have Thunderous Retort, which grants increased super damage while amplified or critically damaged. We don't quite have it yet, but it's definitely going to be powerful. We also have Trace Evidence, which will generate Ionic Traces on melee kills since we will jolt the target before it dies. Feel free to experiment, the seasonal mods are pretty great this time around. This build is extremely fun to play and takes advantage of all the new Arc 3.0 mechanics in a unique and interesting way. Arc Hunter is better than ever and we are just scratching the surface here. You can easily run this with the Assassin's Cowl exotic helmet if you favor survivability more than sheer damage, but maybe we'll save that for another video. I can't wait to see what other crazy builds we will have to cover this week. Warlocks and Titans are up next, so be sure to get subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss those videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have fun diving into Season of Plunder, and I will see you in the next one.